Hello everybody, my name is Rachel and welcome to my channel, Kalanadi. Also, welcome to another day of Vlogmas. I think when you're seeing this will be day 16 or 17 or thereabouts perhaps. I've honestly lost track. I'm just doing whatever whenever I feel like it. Um, but this topic, the 10 longest books on my TBR, was a suggestion that my friend Maya made when I was looking for um, video ideas for Vlogmas. Um, she's Maya Reads here on Booktube. And I thought, well, that might be interesting because I've never actually looked to see how long some of the books on my TBR uh, happened to be. And uh, there were some that I was like, oh my goodness, that's much longer than I thought it was going to be. So I have taken the top 10 longest books, just sorted them by page count on Goodreads, and I've used my want to read shelf on Goodreads for this rather than specifically books that I own, um, because then I get some interesting ones in there that you probably haven't heard of before. I just did a bookshelf tour so you've seen all of the books that I own, um, some of which will reappear on this list. So let's let's get into it. I don't know how much I will have to say about these books because obviously I haven't read them before, but we'll see. At 642 pages we have The Collected Short Fiction of C.J. Cherry. It is quite big and the pages are packed with text. So this one will take a while to read. I've actually read the introduction to it some months ago and thought I would continue with it and I just haven't felt like reading like really massive anthologies or collections for most of the year, but hopefully soon. At 657 pages, we have She Has Her Mother's Laugh by Carl Zimmer. This is a nonfiction book about genetics and heredity, and I have also started reading this one um, some time ago when I was going through a big audiobook binge. I listened to a good chunk of this and then had to return the audiobook and haven't gotten it again since. I do want to return to it. It is a topic that fascinates me. I really, really love reading about genetics. And this seems to be one of the more recent books in that um, field on that topic that comes up in my recommendations all the time. So I will definitely return to this one soon. At 777 pages is Godel Escher Bach and Eternal Golden Braid by Douglas R. Hofstadter. This is one I don't know much about. I first came across it on a booktube channel that I cannot remember anymore. I don't think it's around and I never made a note of it, but whoever was talking about it made it sound absolutely brilliant. I think it's a biography of like these three geniuses or something. Um, I have heard that Hofstadter's nonfiction is excellent. Like he's a very highly recommended nonfiction writer. So for that reason, even, even though I don't know that much about this particular book, it seems highly acclaimed and I just genuinely want to try something by the author anyway. So yeah, if you know anything about this book and you think I might like it, definitely let me know because I should probably try to find it and try to read it to see what it's like. At a whopping 800 pages is Musketeer Space by Tansy Rayner Roberts. I got the ebook of this for a great deal, like $2 or something, had no idea how long it was. I think this was back in the day when I read a mystery novel by Tansy Rayner Roberts under her Livia Day. Um, pseudonym perhaps, and I was interested in just reading more by the author. And I think Musketeer Space is a gender-flipped science fiction retelling of the Three Musketeers, and I believe that the author serialized it like on her blog or something. Um, it sounds like it might be really great. However, I tried to read The Three Musketeers before getting to it. That would make sense if it's a retelling. I should actually know what the original story is. Unfortunately, after two attempts at reading The Three Musketeers, I gave up because it just wasn't interesting enough, but I still think that I'll probably enjoy Musketeer Space. Also, that's what Wikipedia is for, so you can read the summaries of the books that you actually don't want to read and then just move on with your life. <laughs> The Found and the Lost, the collected novellas of Ursula K. Le Guin, is about 816 pages long. This isn't exactly a TBR book. I have read almost every single novella in this collection in other collections by Le Guin, though honestly, the very first one in here, perhaps the most famous title that I recognize out of this, is Vaster Than Empires and More Slow. 
I don't think I've read it before. I can't remember anything about it if I have. Um, so mostly I want to get into this so I can read that one and finally know what it is. After that is one of those gigantic anthologies edited by Anne and Jeff Vandermeer, The Big Book of Classic Fantasy. Goodreads says this is 848 pages long. I don't even know if it's out yet, but I will eventually get it probably on ebook because massive books, you know? Then there is Neil Stevenson's latest novel, Fall or Dodge in Hell, at 896 pages. I think this is kind of a follow-up to Reem-D, which had some really interesting parts, kind of contemporary science fiction, but it wasn't my favorite of Stevenson's novels, not my favorite of his worlds or characters. So I, I intend to check out Fall eventually. Um, the size of it doesn't intimidate me. I mean, all of Stevenson's novels are huge. Um, I just haven't gotten around to it yet because I'm not as interested in that particular world. Then there is a book I know nothing about. It is humongous. Ash, A Secret History by Mary Gentle, 1,113 pages. I think that in the past, when this book was originally released, it was done so in like three or four parts, not all at once. And I've had it on my to-read list for a while because um, occasionally I look at the Fantasy Masterworks listings on Book Depository, and Ash has been listed for that line in 2020 or 2021. Whether that actually happens or not, I don't know, but I am I'm curious, and I think it's just a fantasy novel, a humongous fantasy novel, um, and I've, I've never really heard anything about it or the author either. The second longest book on my TBR is 1,178 pages long, and it is The Big Book of Science Fiction, edited by Anne and Jeff Vandermeer. Like their big book of classic fantasy, I don't think I'm going to read every single story in it. I'll probably, at this point, cherry pick what I'm interested in and then kind of set it aside more as a, a an anthology to reference if I want to um, look up a particular author or story or something. You can see that I did start reading it at the beginning of 2019. I thought I would read one story every day and finish it by the end of the year. That did not happen. Um, <laughs> I should probably switch to an ebook version of this as well if I want to seriously read it. Um, it's big, it's heavy, it is at least quite a floppy paperback, but it's not really comfortable to hold for long periods of time, which is why I think I stopped reading from it pretty quickly. And the single longest book on my TBR is 1,305 pages long. Heliconia by Brian Aldiss. This is the SF Masterworks version, and I'm pretty sure that this is actually a trilogy, like three separately published books that's just in an omnibus in this particular edition. Um, I count it as the longest book, though, because when, whenever I read it, I will read it as a single book. And I also know very little about it. Um, I've wanted to read more by Brian Aldiss for a while. I have read his book um, Greybeard, which is in the SF Masterworks line, and thought it had some really interesting parts to it. Heliconia, I think, is science fiction. Of course, it's in the SF Masterworks line, but I think it may also be a bit more on the horror end of things. I've heard it described kind of in that way. So who knows if I will actually like it or not. <laughs> So that is it. Those are the 10 longest books on my TBR as of right now. A lot of them, of course, are collections, anthologies, and omnibuses, but I think that's kind of what ends up being the longest anyway. Um, we'll see if I get around to any of these in 2020. Let me know what is the longest book on your TBR, or perhaps what is the longest book you have ever gotten through? I think the longest book I have ever read was The Count of Monte Cristo by Alexander Alexander Dumas, and I enjoyed the heck out of it. I don't know why I shy away from truly large books so much. Anyway, that is it for me and this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be back tomorrow, and until then, bye.